this on a big handicap, and this is the only way out. I'm a happy sinner. <laughs> Up to a point. I know there are some things which, um, by necessity, by virtue of living in a, in a big city and uh, working in an industry, that some things would just be too much to, to try and change it all in one go. That's summed up in, in a beautiful phrase of St. Augustine, who famously said, Dear Lord, make me holy. Pause, yeah. but not yet. And I hear an echo of that in what Tony's saying. By the end of his third week, Nick has overcome his ambivalence towards monastic life. But he's still pondering intellectual doubts about Jesus Christ as the embodiment of God. Father Christopher wants him to get off the fence. Could you imagine yourself uh, reading a, a passage of scripture mm -hmm. like um, take up your cross and follow me. Mm -hmm. And that actually being for you a moment when you knew that that was God speaking to you and having a deep emotional reaction which would change the way you lived your life. I could imagine it, yes. That's what I'm encouraging you to can you believe that in the next three weeks you're actually going to find the page, get off the fence, make the choice, whichever of those three, three, three weeks, want. Father. I mean, you know, <laughs> well, 38 years, and you're expecting me to do it in three weeks. Yeah, but the point <laughs> I'm making to you, that's the whole point I'm making to you, is mm. um, big decisions yeah. have to be made at a point in time. Yeah. The whole God thing again. Yeah. He, he's... Um, He's not going to let me get away with being a sort of non-realist, post-liberal, you know, whatever. Um, but then, you know, he is the abbot of a Roman Catholic monastery, so... Tony is beginning to reflect on why a successful life and career has been punctuated with unhappiness. He's exploring whether the spiritual vision of the monks can offer any help with his problems. I spent two and a half weeks in the psychiatric unit. Um, having had a bit of a breakdown, and uh, it all got a bit too much. So I remember walking down Shoreditch High Street, tears streaming down my face, listening to Animals by Pink Floyd, just thinking, what the fuck is this all about? You know, what am I? What is this life thing? What is this awful, awful, awful thing that I've been given? Tony chose as his mentor, Brother Francis, oh. who works by day as a nurse for children with cancer. I'm not just going through the motions, I am praying, yeah. you know, with a little, as I, as I keep saying, this little disclaimer at the bottom, which is sort of like, you know, if there is a God, I am praying to him, yeah. if there isn't, then I'm just yeah. talking to myself. Yeah. Um, but I am praying, but then I feel a bit of a fraud doing that, because it's like making a Christmas list. Is this just some hocus-pocus to believe in to make myself feel better, mm. and to, you know, give my sense to fall back on? Yeah. And I don't want it to be a safety net. I want it to actually serve a spiritual, but also like, you know, kind of a practical purpose yeah. in life. Well, I think if we go back to what we've, what we've spoken about before, and that's about being still and trying to be still and centred yeah. and um, being still and knowing God that God's there somewhere, I think that's rather than the sort of shopping list mm. approach. How does God speak to you? I think he speaks to me through, through experience, through other people. Um, and I think he speaks to me in the early hours of the stillness of the morning. I think you have to seek him out. Mm. And I do really feel that there's a God somewhere inside, you know, all of us. Yeah, I think maybe I'm just expecting a little bit too much, I suppose. Yeah. For me, it's about an intimate, real relationship with, 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 with my God, for want of a better word. And it's, um, 
and that's an ongoing thing and that's something I struggle with and sometimes you know I walk away from and sometimes I come back and um, but that's that's ongoing work really and hard work mm. um, but it goes back to that picture of the potter you know <clears throat> of God creating you know Adam from the clay <clears throat> and knowing that the potter never gives up on the clay he's never going to give up me you know and he's he's the only person that never gives up on you even when you're giving up on yourself it's halfway through their time here and the abbot is worried about Peter while happy that he enjoys analyzing the religious texts father Christopher is keen that he should also engage with them on a personal level maybe those sad and angry psalms are going to help you to find a part of your inner world that you perhaps don't want to go to. Okay. I don't know what I mean by that. Does that <laughs> ring any bells or not? Um, in a way it does, yes, but I've, I've, I've been to the place I think you've talked about before I came here. I'm just asking myself all the time, is this really relevant to us now? Gary is beginning to think more deeply about his religious past and what he thinks God wants for him. Many times I see God as a big God up there, you know, with a big stick, and every time I do wrong, he's ready to beat me, and he's ready, ready to, you know, just shun me. I think God to him wears a black balaclava and gives punishment beatings to people who don't live up to the perfect image of Christ. And Gary will always be in fear of that. Gary's hope is that once he's come to terms with his past, he will be better equipped to get married and settle down. His fear is that God has other plans. I've got such a fear inside that I'm going to be asked to be single. And, and the fear, you know, it, it cripples me at times. And there's times I won't spend time with God just in case I hear that word, you have to be single. And it stops me. And so I, I was just asked, I'm not asking you for an answer, I'm asking you for your, what would you take from that? Because you were saying there it's good to ask the advice of other people. Absolutely. You're saying those scriptures came to you spread out over a long period of time. Is that yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Well, I would have thought that the, the crucial other person you've got to ask in that sense is a, is a marriage partner. Yeah. I mean, I suppose the most simple answer would be this, would be if God presents you with a woman who you feel you, you should marry, then there's your answer. Yeah. And if he doesn't, then there's your answer. Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. By their fourth week in the monastery, the group seem to be moving forward. The men even hold their own prayers outside church, and occasionally even observe the rule of silence. Anthony feels his purpose for being here is becoming clearer. At the end of the day, we're all searching for something, aren't we? Whether it be what your mother did to you when you were a kid or whatever, and you push it to the back of your mind, and then you think you're dealing with it, and all these other things that you do, whether it be you take drugs, you drink alcohol and whatever, and you say, oh, yes, I'm over that. But, yeah, that first inclination, that very heart, the seed of it all is still sitting in there and you're actually not dealing with the actual problem, the thing that's actually creating all of this. And I would hope that whilst being here that that's actually what we'd be dealing with, with what is the source of the problem, what that seed is, to eradicate that pain, get rid of that. <laughs> 